Hi guys, we are coming to you live from the RV Industry Association. Oh, spoiler alert, we're at our Airstream. Oh right, we're at, no. we're at our Airstream. Well, <laughs> not our Airstream, an Airstream, a really cool Airstream. We're at the RV Industry Association trade show here in Louisville, Kentucky, where all the dealers come to showcase what is new and cool for the coming year. And of course, all these vendors show up and bring their coolest gadgets and must have items. So, so you can see that we're here at the Airstream booth. They've got a huge display this year. I think they've got 17 units here, which is pretty big. And we're gonna take you inside one of their newest, coolest units. This is a 33 foot Airstream Classic. So it's big. It doesn't have a triple axle anymore. It's a double axle now. So I don't know if you can tell because it's kind of hidden behind the sign there. But um, it has the coolest interior. April Shout says out she's hello. been praying. Thank you, April, very much. Yeah, I appreciate, appreciate that. It. So we're, we're going to step inside this Airstream. We just thought we would show you guys the new Airstream Classic just because we think it's really pretty swanky and cool. Like one thing I noticed that they're doing a lot now, um, you can see like the LED lighting. Uh, there's all sorts of like just cool lighting touches throughout these trailers. I mean, they're pretty slick compared to our 2003 unit. Hello, Wilmington. Saw you, John. Uh, now we're inside the Classic. Uh, again, you know, we have an Airstream Classic, but ours is a uh, 2003 model, and so they've really, uh, they've really changed a lot in the last 13 years. Um, I'm going to warn you, we have a connection. So this so, may be spotty, so stick with us if it's... Sir Zachary says, hi, Loloho. Harkey says, greetings from Germany. Hey, guys. Hello. Hello from Ohio. Hello from Mesa, Arizona. Say hi, hi to the Bulletproof Diesel guys for us. Philip says he saw one of these in the... Can am. Yeah, I just want to show you this thing because this is like a what is it, 33 feet? Yeah. Um, just the, the fit and f the finishings, the materials they use, like everything is kind of honestly kind of a step up over <laughs> what we have. Yeah, like these hinges and these doors now are really like sturdy, heavy duty. I don't know if you can see those or not, but um, really cool. The bathroom is pretty amazing yeah <laughs> we're gonna show you the bathroom so oddly enough christy is super fired up about this bathroom and yeah. wants to show you because it's got all sorts of cool stuff it's got cool stuff it's got a double closet but it has really good lighting in here I don't know yeah if you can see oh, that's why she likes it so yeah, much it's got cause... great lighting i don't know if you can see behind me but <laughs> there's the vanity there and it's got some great lighting so when you put on your makeup you don't feel like you're putting hey, your makeup Christa on Butte. in a dark cave Hello, Mark in England. Yeah, you got Don in Oregon. A really great view out the window back here, so you might give your neighbors a show if oh, you don't close your. <laughs> yeah, the great thing is the toilet is like right next to the window, this yeah. huge window. So uh, you know, if you want to spend a little quality time uh, in the bathroom, Looking you'll have a nice window. view. This is kind of cool too, like the the light switches and everything. I mean, I, I don't know. This seems kind of geeky, but like our light switches look like they're a lot of our stuff looks like it came out of the 80s, which honestly it probably did. But this stuff just seems really modern and sleek. You know, like, uh, I don't know. But everything is kind of a step up. Yeah, it's got a huge shower. I don't know if you can see, this shower is really big. I mean, honestly, not to give you too much information, but it yep. can fit two people this in it. This is the first. This is a huge shower for an RV, so Long, long honeymoon impressive. in the shower, together. <laughs> I mean, it is G-rated at the moment. Yeah, so. <laughs> is this legal on YouTube? I don't know. Yeah, um, so it's pretty inside. impressive. Yeah. It's, it's not a lot of a compromise, you know, as far as an RV goes, being on the road. So it looks like you've got your built-in multimedia system, all that good stuff here. You've got, oh, I want to show them this. Hey, hey. Uh, our connection, I think, is so bad. It, we're not getting it'll keep comments. recording. Okay. It'll keep recording. Okay. Sorry, guys. The, we're inside an Airstream, which is inside a building, which means our connection is kind of terrible. Um, so hopefully the live stream will pick back up. We're going to step back outside. Maybe we should just step outside. <laughs> but it has a really cool uh, control panel here. You can see um, the lighting is, is bad, but it's got, you know, everything is controlled off this master panel. So it's pretty cool. 
it hang comes, tight uh, for just a second. We're gonna step outside, and I think our connection's gonna get a lot. I want to show them. It comes complete with a bottle of peach champagne <laughs> and two bowls of grapes on the dinette, which I think is a nice touch. I think there's grape coupon in the refrigerator. We'll All right, to we're gonna step out, and hopefully our connection is going to greatly improve. I'll try not to break my foot stepping out. Yeah. Chrissy's gonna grab her things, and we're gonna go for a stroll. Yeah. I wanted. Think our connection. Hello, Erie, Pennsylvania. Okay, we just not, we're outside the airstream now. I mean, part of the the problem is, you know, I mean, airstreams are aluminum, and uh, the aluminum inhibits si signals, like cellular signals. So we just stepped outside, especially since we're inside a building. I mean, you know, uh, it was a weak signal to begin with. Hello, Texas. Uh, I just want to show you guys uh, RVIA and kind of like what goes on here and why people come here. This is our second time to visit this show. I mean, there are a lot of people who visit the show every year, of course. Um, so, like, it's the biggest RV trade show, yeah. I guess, in the country. Hey, George. See George Sears in Utah. Yeah. Hi, guys. It's jumping ahead in chunks. Sorry. Yeah, sorry about that, guys. I think, I hope that in the final upload to YouTube this will be a smooth stream but we're kind of doing the best we can we really just kind of wanted to show you guys this live from the floor of RVIA because you can kind of get a sense of what it's like to be here huge trade show with just every RV manufacturer yeah, every unit that you could imagine all the new stuff that's coming out you know um, all the new gadgetry must have goodies that you want to get to take with you on the road. So, let's see. Somebody asked why Airstream over other brands. I mean, we don't have any kind of relationship with Airstream. I should make that clear. Yeah. We just, we... They don't pay us anything. No, they don't. <laughs> we just like, like Airstreams. That, unfortunately. You know, uh, true story, like we went shopping for an RV about a decade ago. We had no idea what we wanted, and we went to everything. Like, we had a long, hot day at the RV dealership. Yeah. We went in everything from the little pop-up, you know, like the smallest one you could find, to the biggest motorhome, like the huge motorhomes. And they had two Airstreams on the lot, and we just liked them. I don't know. Yeah. There's something about it, you know. They just felt comfortable. They felt... Um, Wait, doable? Lash Turner says they should pay you. I agree, Lash. You need to do, we need to do a write-in <laughs> yeah, campaign. You're right. Just mail your letter to Bob you're Wheeler. Like, let him know. <laughs> Actually, we saw Bob Wheeler earlier today. Yeah, He's we saw the CEO. Nice I mean, they know about us, but we just yeah. don't have any kind of relationship with them. Yeah. See, John said, glad to see you're feeling better. I appreciate that. I, I am. I'm, comment. Somebody said, Airstreams are Americana, and they'll be on the road forever. And I totally agree. Airstreams are very well made. Um, I think it's something like 80% of Airstreams ever built are still on the road in some capacity. So you don't hear that from a lot of other brands. Hi so. to Linda in Oklahoma. Uh, we would love to come visit you in Oklahoma. Yeah. Um, Any questions from anybody out there? I'm, I'm a little worried about the Sooners getting into the playoffs because uh, my wife's Auburn Tigers beat my Alabama Crimson Tide last week. So I'm kind of bummed about that. I think Oklahoma's got Alabama's playoff slot. <laughs> <laughs> Sending Chicago love. Thanks, Kat. Thanks, Chicago. Leslie, hi. B. Um, Stevenson says he wishes Airstream had uh, slide outs. Yeah. Well, you know, they made they slide outs made a few years, but they don't right now. And I just think most people wanted that more traditional shape. They didn't want slide outs, so they stopped making them. But you still can find them in the used market, so if you really want one, you can find it. Getting some roll tides from some of my fellow Bama brothers out there war eagle <laughs> you know i married an auburn girl but yeah. sometimes love smart conquers man. Smart, smart <laughs> love man. conquered the football rivalry That's right. patrick hayhurst says wish airstream made a fifth wheel you know they actually did like one year in the 80s like the late 80s they made an aluminum skinned fifth wheel and there are only like a dozen of them yeah. mark g says hey from downtown auburn wayne oh, says war eagle. war eagle mark get out while you can no what are you talking about <laughs> wonderful town. Have you cleaned um, up all that toilet paper yet? I think it says Norma May from California. Hi, Norma. Yeah, we're going to see. Richard said, glad to see you guys back on the road. 
Thanks, Richard. Yeah, it really felt wonderful to be back on the road, camping with our Airstream, mm-hmm. just traveling once again, because, I mean, it's been a long year. Gary asked, if we can, can you show us a Globetrotter 27 front bedroom? Well, I'll tell you what, we will uh, be going back to the Airstream booth tomorrow, and we'll be shooting lots of video there, and right. so I'll, I'll make sure to look at the Globetrotter. Now, here's one thing of the RVAA that I, I just want to show you guys for uh, research purposes or for educational purposes. They do have a happy hour. Okay. You want red wine? And so, uh, maybe a Miller Lite. I, I have no Miller Lite. I've no got Bud Light. I know. I don't know. Bud Light? Red wine? Sorry. Uh, red wine, please. Okay. It's after 5 o'clock here, guys. Right. It's 5.30. So... Yeah, they have uh, a happy hour that starts around like 4.30 here, <laughs> and it's just a good opportunity to kind of like roam the floor, meet folks, and uh, just have a good time. You know, like half the reason you come to these shows is socialization. Anne said something about, let's see, watching all your videos convinced me to buy an Airstream next year. Uh, well, thank you so much, Ann. We love you too. And... Uh, <laughs> Honestly, I have a book on Amazon. I would give you a copy if I could. You go in and read a, a sample of it called How to Buy an Airstream. And depending on whether you're buying, well, it could help you if you're buying a new one or a used one. Because mm-hmm. I mean, a lot of people would send me emails saying, you know, what can you tell me about buying an Airstream? And so I finally one day <laughs> set aside <laughs> several weeks and just hammered it all out into a right. book. So uh, I, a lot of people have told me it saved them like literally thousands and thousands of dollars. So John Coffey said it's an awesome book. Thank you. Yeah, I really try and just like tell it like it is, and uh, I'm on your side, on the buyer's side. Yeah. Um, when it comes down to it. Now Christy's two-fisted. Right. She's got. Well, I've got your drink and my. Drink. No, this is adult grape juice. I understand. Mm-hmm. So, hi from Mark. Did you get your fridge fixed? And are you on the road? The answer is yes and yes, Mark. And in fact, I'm working on the refrigerator video. We met with the Dometic people today. We installed a Dometic refrigerator. Most of our appliances are Dometic in our unit. In fact, we could stroll out to their booth if we can find it here. (laughs) Uh, But we got the fridge installed. Everything went smoothly. You know, the hardest part about that fridge installation is just handling the 150 pound appliance. It's just a bear to get it in and out the door. I mean, we did it. It's just, you know, the process of moving it. Somebody asked, how is Seymour doing? Seymour is running strong, totally bulletproofed. And yeah, Seymour's great. Working, I mean, working hard. We've had a little bit of cold weather, and he's, he's fired up great in the cold, you know, like it used to be an ordeal <laughs> starting yeah. Seymour. I mean, uh, oil temperatures are staying around 190 degrees towing, sometimes less. And, you know, we've pulled over a couple pretty steep grades, and, you know, Seymour hasn't flinched. And I love having the scan gauge in there now because I can monitor the oil and coolant temperatures. Uh, somebody was asking where we are, and we are at the RV Industry Association trade show. It is for basically dealers and people within the business, and it's here at the Expo Center in Louisville, Kentucky. So we arrived yesterday and have just sort of been trudging through all the different um, units to see and and trying to figure out all the cool gear and stuff and finding out what you guys would be interested in and things we need to try. Fernando said, uh, hi from Ecuador. Wayne asked, will that Atima generator really run the air conditioner for a long while? All I could do is like report on how it did on that day. And that was kind of a cool day. It was probably 55 degrees. I really want to do a second test and really put under more stress with some sort of meter attached to it. I mean, you know, uh, when I do these reviews, I'm doing the best I can within a reasonable amount of time. And so, uh, you know, that generator puts out 1,600 watts, period. So, like, you know... It can run an air conditioner, but you might need an easy start attached on the air conditioner. So I'm going to try it again. Yeah. Somebody was asking if this show is open to the public, and it is not. Um, You have to be within the industry, and we are here as members of the press so that we can share the news of what's going on with you guys, the public. So... See, B. Stevenson says if you're going to buy a generator, which one? That's kind of a loaded question. I think Honda's the gold standard. I mean, period. They've sort of earned that reputation. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if if my safest bet is to say get a Honda. 
but there are a lot of other choices. Right now we're traveling with our Champion 3100 unit, which has the remote electric start. I love the remote yeah. electric start. And it's perfect when it's cold weather and you don't want to have to go out and crank your generator at seven in the morning when it's, you know, 35 degrees outside. Yeah, you so. just feel like <laughs> king of the world when you're just sitting there in your bathrobe and it's, you know, 20 degrees outside and you just click a button and your generator fires yeah, up. it's pretty so. sweet. And late at night when you want to turn it off and you don't want to have to go out as well. So, Florida Yak Fisher says you could buy two from Harbor Freight for the price of one Honda. I mean, there's some truth to that, but, you know, you'll probably need to buy two because the Honda will still be running 20 years from now. And the, you know what I'm saying? So you kind of, sometimes you get what uh, Laser Racer 6. Hi from New Zealand. Yeah. Wow. Hi to New Zealand. Camping Roadies asked, what's that behind us? Uh, we're at the, the Thor, Thor booth, booth right now. This um, is, they had a bar for And that's a wet hour. bar behind this. So, so cheers. We just uh, made a stop for a drink. Um, Bill asked if we uh, have plans on putting solar on our Airstream. We have like a little uh, lithium ion battery that I'm reviewing right now that you can recharge using solar. And it's just uh, kind of a little power source that helps you off the grid. I'm um, always <laughs> open to installing solar. It's just uh, we haven't done it yet, to be honest. I mean, it's just like we've been sort of happy the generator's been working for us um, they somebody, got no miller light i know what's going on they were out <laughs> yeah no miller light somebody was Only asking Bud light. he said are you both still awesomely in love after all these years on the road mm, oh, this could be i think so <laughs> i mean we're i think so tolerating each other fairly i've well, often said that uh, <laughs> your first rv trip marjorie said she was taking her first inaugural trip oh. um your first trip will strengthen your relationship or it will end your relationship. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> it could like, it will either strengthen your marriage or it's the end of your marriage. Yeah. Like you have to you have to be able to get along, you know. Uh, Let's see what some of these other comments say. Um still, are you still planning on coming up to Canada. Canada. Uh, we were thinking Calgary in January. I mean is that, <laughs> is that is that a good idea? I don't think we'll make it then, <laughs> but maybe in the summer. Yeah, maybe next um, year. somebody's asking about your health. Did you give a little update? Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm doing so much better the last two months, guys. That's about all I can say. I haven't had an MRI scan, so I don't know if the tumor is actually shrinking. But I do know how I feel. And I feel like 20 years younger, or maybe 50 years younger than I felt. I mean, uh, you know, I said that like in June and July, I felt kind of like I was dying. And I, I'm not being melodramatic. There were just days when I felt like... I'm, I'm dying. I don't yeah. know what's going on, but so I'm dying. Bad. And the last two months, I felt so much better. I can't even explain it. So. Yeah. Uh, thank you for asking. That's yeah. very kind of you. Somebody was asking uh, if we're coming to California. We do come to California uh, fairly regularly. We were actually there in January and February of this year. Um, Eli says hi from Alaska. Hi from Alaska. Hello, Eli. Fade said glad you're feeling better. Thank you so much. Thanks, Greg. Um, let's see. Sorry, I'm trying to scroll through some of these comments. Let's see. Um, Mr. Gold Series asks, anything revolutionary at the show? I would say one thing I've noticed is, uh, like heating systems, for example. I'm not saying this is revolutionary necessarily, but now you can get like an Airstream with floor heating, like mm -hmm. an, and it's sort of radiator-style heating that goes all the way around the unit. I mean, the heating in ours is probably typical of many RVs. It's, uh, we have a furnace. Uh, propane furnace and then a heat pump and we have a heat pump you know so like you have either got heat coming out sort of like in two places on, near the floor by your feet or you got heat coming out in one place in the ceiling and this radiator heat it's just like coming out from all the way around you all the way around the trailer so I think I think that's really a great uh, great advancement Somebody was asking how we came up with the name Loloho, or what does it mean? And so Loloho is just the shortened version of Long Long Honeymoon. And we named our original blog Long Long Honeymoon because we got married in uh, Key West, Florida. We towed our Airstream there and spent our honeymoon in it, and then ended up towing our Airstream cross-country that summer for an extended honeymoon. And so... We just named it Long Long Honeymoon, so that's sort of where it all started. Elizabeth from Florida asks if Airstreams are wheelchair accessible. I gotta be honest, I haven't really seen that with Airstream. I, I think because either. that, I think the uh, the doorway, I assume, would have to be modified, and because of that aluminum panels. 
Uh, I think I don't know. an option that you could look into is one of the units that has the back hatch that opens that you can put gear in. That's a good point. And yeah. I think they can modify them for wheelchair accessible folks. Um, but yeah, I think it is something that you, you would have to get with the factory on or have it done after market. Um, Let's see. Somebody asked, what's the sticker, sticker price, price on the Airstream? I didn't lot. see a sticker price, but those new classics are... Uh, I think at least 140,000. Yeah, they're like 140 grand. Three foot classics, so it's pretty pricey. So that's why you need um, uh, you need to read how to buy an Airstream. Because <laughs> <laughs> I think there will be some discounts on that. Jim Pratt, hello Jim, good to see Hi, you. Jim. Says any thoughts on doing Route 66? We've, We've sort of done, done it off it and on. We haven't done it like start to finish. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know too many people who have, to be honest, because uh, I just don't know. Like yeah, there are parts of in Chicago. Yeah, I think. no, I think it's a great idea. Uh, you know. John says hi from the UK. Hello. Hello from Tupelo, Mississippi. Some, uh, Johnny Smith. We need to do Good some to airstreaming you. in the UK, don't you think? Yep. Somebody says go check out the Class B airstream. Tomorrow we'll yeah. probably be back at the airstream booth. They have booth. a new Class B airstream that is really cool. We looked at it yesterday, and so we, we probably need to do some pictures and some video of it because it's impressive. Hawk Sattler says, isn't it a hassle to provide three different kinds of fuel, propane, diesel, and gas? Um... Well, you usually buy them all at the same place. I guess it's so. sort of, yeah, you <laughs> kind of buy really them at the same place. Deal. I mean, it's a it's a minor hassle, but uh, the generator gets such good fuel economy that uh, we don't have to, it's not like we're buying that fuel every Hi, day. Hi, um, Let's see. Hey, from North Carolina. Hey, Bill. We will probably be coming to North Heading Carolina soon. soon. I got We've got family in North Carolina. Somebody says check out the Atlas. I'm not sure about the Atlas. I don't know. I think it's the, the big Class B. Oh, that's the. Yeah. Oh, we did see that thing. It's I didn't really know. Cool. Apparently, it's 217 grand. Well, it, it is big and spacious. I'll say that. Yeah, it's like, but I don't know if I would compare that. It's a yeah. That's a lot of money and a lot. That's a whole lot of van. I'll tell you that. That's a lot of camper yeah. van. Yeah. Hi, walk. Aaron. Oh, in North Carolina. Yeah, we're gonna try to walk and talk and drink. We're gonna try to walk, time. talk, drink, and find the next bar. I just want you guys to see some more of the show. Um, Steven asked, what's in the cups? This is, they told me it was grape juice. So I'm just, I'm, I think it's I'm, ta I'm taking them at their word. <laughs> they said it was the big boy grape juice. Hi, Bill in Flagstaff. Sorry, reading and walking and <laughs> talking at the same time is proving to be Philip a Jones time. says, uh, do you have any thoughts about the, f the, the nest? Um, yeah, we did see the nest. Well, we can't talk about it. Yeah, though. we can't talk. We about can't it. talk about it or show you. But they, uh, they. No rumor policy. has it there is uh, something that Airstream is working on, called the nest, and that's all we can say. Yeah, but we did see it. We went inside and opened all the doors. And uh, I've heard it's going to be around. really cool. That's about yeah. all I can say. So. I think that's something that will uh, really appeal to millennials. Probably. Yeah. That's a big focus at this show. We picked up on is yeah. like they're really. Really talking We're going about after that younger market. I think trying to get people in at a younger age and keep them involved for years to come. Michael Honey was asking about the nest, the Airstream nest, and I mean, honestly, uh, we're kind of on a tight leash about what we could talk about with regard to that. Yeah, they're uh, very secretive about it. We yeah. did get to look at it, but again, they were strictly no photos, no video of it. Yeah, like um, they really don't, don't want us to reveal too details, much. So. We'll let you know, but I think they're supposed to be coming out in April. So if you're looking for it, keep your eyes peeled for them. Let's see. Somebody asked about camera lenses on the smartphone for video. Um, I do that, and I have a photo channel on YouTube. If you just look up loloho.photo or Shawn Michael, you will find it. Bill asked, are you still back bulletproof? Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, our truck is running uh, like it... It's running like it was a new truck. I mean, frankly, it's running great. And uh, so I have time, absolute confidence in it. So, yeah. I would uh, say this time last year when yeah. we were on our truck uh, yeah. in the cold weather and we would try to crank it, it would take several attempts to crank Seymour. And now it just fires up automatically, even when it's in the 20s outside. So, you know, it's pretty impressive from that standpoint. Somebody we asked if this is a house issues. behind. Yeah, we, yeah. Lo we love those guys at Bulletproof Diesel. I think they're just an awesome first-class operation. So if you have a six-liter and you want to take it to the best, yeah, take it there. Because we, we've been actually been in a lot of different shops, and that's they're the best, honestly. Clayton um, Francis <laughs> says, thank you so much for your channel. 
looking to go full-time soon and you've helped us so much. Well, thank you, Clayton. We're glad that we've been able to help you. Somebody asked about this behind us, and I just kind of wanted to point out that this is one of the things, even at the RV show, you see some things like this. These uh, these are park models. Park models or kind of prefab housing, I guess you'd call yeah, it. Yeah, they're sort of small prefab housing. You see these a lot in these sort of RV communities in like California and Arizona that will allow you to put these little tiny houses on an RV lot. And so, you know, they're about the size of a large fifth wheel and um, they just don't really move. You can move them if you decide to change RV communities, but yeah, so they've got several of those here for people to look out, look at. Poncho asked if we plan all of our stops and stays when we're traveling. We really don't. I mean, we're kind of like, Fly we bounce around. Of our pants. We go to places, and if we like a place, we hang out longer. And if we don't like it, we we bail. Um, let's see. So, so, I wanted, Somebody says, are you going to be in Quartzsite this year? I, truthful answer is I don't know. We don't really have plans to be there, but we, we might if I talk my wife into it. Mr. Ghost Wolf said, we would love an Airstream if they weren't so ridiculously priced. One thing I would point out, we bought ours used. All right, we didn't buy yeah. uh, brand new, and so like, uh, and I would say the the price of an Airstream can go from like five hundred bucks to a quarter of a million dollars. Yeah. And you know, like you could buy you could buy a brand new one, and it, yes, uh, it's it's a it's a crazy amount of money. But you know, you buy one that's five years old, you'll probably get it about half price because of depreciation. Or you could buy one that's twenty years old. And the great thing about Airstreams is they don't really go out of style. Now, you may have to do some work to the interior, but... Okay, Wayne Wilson says, say hi to Kathy, my sister-in-law. She's a fan of our channel. Hey, Kathy. Hi, Kathy. Thanks for watching. Uh, Hawk Sattler says, is there a state you haven't traveled yet? The only state we have not visited is Hawaii. Yeah. And we hope to remedy that soon. But, of course, we won't have our Airstream with us because, you know... Shipping that would be a little pressure. <laughs> yeah. Maybe Airstream will sponsor us and ship our <laughs> unit to uh, Hawaii. That would be nice. <laughs> so we're just strolling along looking for the next the next bar. Do we know when the RV show is in Quartzsite? I believe it's in January. Yeah. Um, like the we end, were there last the year January. towards the end of January. Um, Philip Jones says, I commend you on your attitude about your tumor. You're an inspiration. I hope that... I may have your good attitude if it ever happens to uh, me. Well, I appreciate that very much. I mean... Truthfully, it was, uh, I debated whether or not to sort of go public and tell people what was going on, but I feel like um, we get a lot of questions from you guys and people asking, you know, why aren't you doing this or that or why aren't you on the road? And, and it's such a big thing, it's kind of hard, it, it can be hard to keep that sort of thing to yourself. Yeah. And it was really kind of a relief to, to talk about it. <laughs> so, like, I'll never forget, I mean, honestly, like the, the video that I, when I announced that I had this issue, I... I had it ready like three or four days before I posted it and my finger would just go to the post <laughs> button and I would just say, I don't know, I don't know if I'm going to do it or not, you know what I mean? But we felt and, like we needed to tell people because we weren't on the road and we were supposed to be on the road and people were asking, what's the matter? Why aren't you on the road yet? And we were like, ah, we've had some delays, you know, and we were trying to sort of skirt around it because at first we didn't know what was going on. We were waiting for a diagnosis, so... Like, I'll probably never forget that moment in my life when I'm, like, sitting there with my finger on the mouse button, like, do I take this live or not? Because once you let that cat out of the bag, it's not coming back. Yeah. And I hit click. And I haven't... I don't think I've ever regretted it, really. And, you know, you guys have been so fantastic with all the support that you've offered. Um, it's really been, you know, so encouraging and gratifying to me. And I think I've gotten so many messages from people who have dealt with health issues, maybe even this specific one. And, you know, like one guy, he, he wrote me, and I think his name was Josh, and he said that he went to get checked up at his doctor. He's like 33, but he went to get a checkup just because he saw that video and thought, well, I should get myself checked out. And I really think, guys, you really should, because most of us men, we don't like going to doctors. I didn't like going to doctors. Nobody likes it, going no, to the doctor, but, but, but sometimes well, some you people just do, gotta but. do it. Yeah. <laughs> so I went a long time without going to see a doctor. So that's one of the I think messages from my situation is, if you know if you you've got an issue, go get yourself checked out. Let's see. Richard says he'd love to spend the winter in Florida, but he's having a hard time finding a place for the RV. 
I think the problem is a lot of people have your idea of going to Florida yeah. for the winter and people book pretty far in advance. So that is probably your biggest hurdle there is just a lot of people have planned in advance. So Thank you, Stephen. He says we're like long lost family. I appreciate oh, that thanks. very much. It's really sweet. Yeah, we love going to Florida. Florida in wintertime, I mean, it's gonna get busy with RVers because it gets it gets packed top to bottom. We'd like to go back down to, to Key West. Steve says he had a stroke in July, and the ambulance came right to his RV and brought him to the hospital. Wow. Sorry to hear that, Steve. Hope yeah, you're, we hope, hope you're, you're on the better. mend. Let's see. Rich says women are way tougher than men when it comes to health. I think, you know, men, it's like... Well, I women just, have a lot of health issues that you can't ignore. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's like, and it starts at a young age, and so I think we just sort of get over the, the fear of the doctor. Ken says, I need to take a dip in a Bacta tank. Isn't that the thing that Luke Skywalker was in in Empire Strikes Back? I think it was. See? I'm Let's geeking. See. I would love to get in a Bacta tank. Let's see. Now, Lash says, now up in age, my wife and I have to go to the doctor regularly. One thing I realized when I went to the doctor and I kind of got this diagnosis is my life is forever changed because I'll be going to doctors probably at least every six months for the rest of my life, maybe every three months. I don't know. Um, Let's see. Um, now I'm Scott paranoid. Humbird said, we've learned so much. Thank you. Well, we're, we're glad to be Thanks, of help. Uh, Sun Kim says, hello from San Francisco. Hi. Um, I'll tell you, we've met some interesting people at this show. We met the uh, Less Junk, More Journey folks. Yeah, were they were super around. nice. They were really cool. RV and Education 101, Mark and Don Polk. Mark and Don Polk of super RV Education nice. 101. If you have a Class A unit, he is like the guru of fixing yeah. stuff. So. Hey, one thing I wanted to say to you guys, because uh, we don't, we never talk about our Instagram page, but we do have an Instagram page. And on Instagram, you can sort of upload these just little quick clips. These little uh, Instagram little, story videos. Just little bits and clips of things that are happening to you during the day. And mm -hmm. we're, we've been doing that lately. So if you, if you do Instagram, be sure and go to Long Long Honeymoon on Instagram. Yeah, and it's and all one us. word, just sort of squished together. Yeah, like if you're already doing Instagram, look us up because we're posting little video clips. So when we do these longer edited videos, it, right now it just takes time to do that sort of yeah, stuff. Like I can a shoot a lot of footage and then it takes literally days to sometimes edit a lot of that content. But on Instagram, you know, it's fun because we can just do these little quick little bursts. And then we love doing these live things, too. Yeah. I want to see this long this comment from John Waite. He says, uh, your subscribers are, are appreciate uh, you sharing your health issue. I've been to doctors because of Sean. Well, thank you so much. Oh, my future yeah. RV life to you guys. Well, thank you, John. That's, that's super kind. I agree that we have a great subscriber base. We really don't have too many trolls. In our, yeah. Like, it, Honestly, I'll just tell Which you the Which we're very fortunate for because no, we have friends that have channels in different genres and the trolls and the negativity that they deal with is really overwhelming. So I have to, uh, I think, uh, well, trolls are an issue on YouTube and, but I think in the RV world, most of the RV tra people and travel people are pretty cool. Like I think they're pretty cool people. They enjoy getting out. They enjoy, you know, uh, being with other people. And so they're not trolls to begin with. Secondly, if anybody exhibits any troll behavior on YouTube, I wield the ban hammer. I will ban you in a in a hot second. I mean, I, honestly, I will. Because I, I got a freaking brain tumor, man. Give me a break. Yeah. So, I, like, if somebody is bringing me down and, like, posting a bunch of negative stuff, it's like... Yeah. I mean... Let's see. And I think um, it makes a better community because you get rid of those people and you're left with the cool people at your party. I would rather have fewer subscribers and just more cool people in our subscriber base. L. Wells says, you guys are why I bought my trailer. That's Thank cool. You. Uh, Mr. Robot says, are you full timers or do you have a home base? We do have a home base. We are what some people call part-time full-timers. Yeah, so we seasonal go out full -timers. seasonal full-timers. You know, like in Canada, they call them snowbirds that come out in the winter and they go south. We typically, we're summer birds. Yeah, we're we, sort of summer birds. We head north in the summer, so. so we go where it's cool in the do. summer. If you've ever been in Alabama in summer, you know why. <laughs> George <laughs> says we bought a 2010 25-foot flying cloud. Thanks to you guys. Thanks Somebody asked comments. about, I think this is interesting. Do you get any privacy doing YouTube when out in public? Do they come a knocking? You Depends know, on where we are. We did this for a long, long time and nobody ever recognizes us. And for the most part, nobody recognizes us. If we're going through our daily life, nobody, because somebody 
uh, people say, oh, those people are famous on YouTube. Well, we don't we don't feel famous at all. No. I can promise you. Like, it's a, we, nobody ever recognizes us. Now, if we come to a show like this, where a it's an RV people. show, or if we're in a campground, then some people might. Some campgrounds, so, you know, it's kind depending of, we're on a, where a we niche, are. Have a, so, we don't... I don't expect a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame <laughs> just yet. I'm from doing YouTube, but, but thank you for asking. Yeah. So, I, I really think... Everybody we've met through YouTube that we've met in person has been super cool. And that's always, it's fun to meet people. So if you ever see us and we're out and about, don't hesitate to come up and say hello. Yeah, we would love to meet you. That gives us a lot of positive feedback, too. Yeah. I mean, honestly. It's, it's uh, nice to hear from people that watch her channel and enjoy it. And, you know, um, it gives us, you know, some positive energy. So it's nice. John Hess says, you guys influence us more than any other channel to buy our Airstream Support 22. Thank you very much. And you guys are in John's I'm going to tell Georgia. the Airstream CEO that tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see. Somebody else says, after Chris says, after watching our videos, he bought a used travel trailer with bunks. Took our boys out for the first time. They're hooked. They're hooked. That's awesome. Great That's family great. times. You know, actually, my sister bought her first travel trailer. She'd never done the RV thing. She's got two young girls. And, you know, I said... I said, you know, it's it's totally, obviously, it's totally your decision, but you will make some great family memories, I'm sure, if you take your kids out doing that. And, you know, it's something that my sister and I didn't really grow up doing. See, some uh, Go Outside and Cook says, your Amazon feature based on the A-Store feature is set up through a seller account. We... Uh, is your Amazon store. Amazon store. So we have a store on Amazon. Uh, we're what are called Amazon influencers, and it's a, it's a new program that Amazon's got going. And uh, so we have our own URL on Amazon. Which is? Amazon.com Amazon slash shop slash long, 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 honeymoon. long honeymoon. And so we are sort of curating that little area of Amazon where you can go in and find these different products that are sort of specific to RV travel, the RV life. And, um, and basically we earn a small commission off of anything sold through that store. And it doesn't have to be something that is listed for sale in our store. You can buy anything on Amazon by going through that link. So if you just go to amazon.com slash shop slash long, long honeymoon, you can shop our store of things that we recommend that we use, but you can also use the search bar and find anything that Amazon sells and buy it through our store and we will get a small commission for it. So it's just a, an easy way to drop a tip in our bucket, maybe to say thanks for something you learned on our channel or just for the entertainment value and it doesn't cost you anything. Yeah, it really so. helps and like uh, the thing, the way it works is you go in through our URL and anything you add to your cart during that shopping session ends up uh, sort of kicking back to Long Long Honeymoon. Somebody asked if you ever considered a catamaran. We've looked at possibly more like motor getting boats. into boating, but I've always said that Christy is very accident prone and clumsy. This and coming from the guy who broke his <laughs> stepping. Out. Well, this is, she she did uh, she about broke her back I stepping did. out of our airstream. I so did. I'm just thinking if that happens and we're out in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean somewhere. I don't I'm know gonna... if we're handy enough to be stuck out in the ocean somewhere <laughs> with like a dead engine, you know. So. Jim said, I like how you keep the channel clean. I appreciate that. I mean, and it, it's a fine line you walk because I like, I like edgy humor, honestly, but I don't, I don't use a lot of profanity. I mean, you know, not, it's not, I not mean, unless I break my foot or something. Yeah, I think pretty much what you see on our channel is how we are in our daily life. Yeah, and we're I not agree. like big, you know, curse word droppers. I mean, you know, sometimes as a joke or whatever, but I don't really care to put that on the internet and I don't care to watch that sort of thing on the internet so we try to keep it clean and family friendly and just funny you know you can be funny without we keep it but I do love I love body humor I mean I've always loved I love the like old Monty like Python. Monty Python and stuff and Monty Python can be pretty edgy humor can be edgy I mean if you're going to be funny you have to walk the line and walk the edge sometimes so I don't want to I, I would never set out to intentionally offend anyone but I want to have some fun too you know so it's like got to walk the line let's see kirk says resist the urge to buy a boat yes yeah, they used to say like a boat is a big hole in the water that you throw money in yeah i've heard that and i've also heard like the best the two best days in your life are the day you buy the boat and the day you, the day sell, you sell it, it. so yeah. can you take this i'm going to get another uh, i'm going to the pub crawl yeah, exactly. yeah it might be over oh, unfortunately <laughs> we'll see bar, we let's see uh, bar is closed we've already had last call guys 
says, where's the video on replacing the fridge in your RV? We're it is being edited, that. so. The, the, the only problem with that video is we shot so much footage that I, like, I'm gonna have to like grind down about four hours <laughs> into 10 minutes, you know? Cause I, yeah. I, I don't know if you want to see a four hour You don't want the extended video. version of that video. Yeah. There's a, there's a lot of work that goes into, um, into re replacing a refrigerator. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah, somebody says boat stands for break out another thousand. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I think you're right. Uh, somebody says, how do you find your campgrounds that you stay in? We actually just did a video on this recently. So if you check our video list, I think it's maybe two Yeah, the thumbnail back. says thanks veterans because it was yeah. a veteran who asked the question. It was Veterans Day. And it was Veterans Day. But, um, you know, one of the we use a lot of different sources. One of them is RVParkReviews.com. If yeah. we're actually going to stay at an RV park. Uh, and that's just a free site where you can go in and, and browse reviews, reviews from, from people real people. that have actually stayed yeah. there. You know, we do um, look at the Good Sam Club ratings because they're pretty um, picky as far as rating the cleanliness of bathrooms and facilities and that sort of thing. And then one other place where we will look is Campendium.com, and they have a lot of reviews from people for um, campgrounds, but they also have a lot of reviews for um, boondocking sites, so like Bureau of Land Management land. And so you can sort of find some really cool out of the way places through their site. Nico asked, where did I get the hat? You can find a link to this specific hat in the YouTube description for this video. There's like, if you open that little box, there's a huge list of links. And there's one that literally says Sean's Tilly hat. Mm -hmm. I think this is called the Airflow model. I love this hat. Like it's a, it's just been a great, it's like, it's sort of like, uh, uh, it's great in cold weather. It's great in hot weather. It floats. It it flies. It you know it does okay, it all. Okay, so Ross Mops up spills. Ross Bradley is asking, how do you guys store your camper in the winter? Cover recommendations. Well, we have actually been told that a cover on an airstream is a bad idea yeah. because it basically you know sort of scratches or dulls the the aluminum. The aluminum. Now on a fiberglass trailer, but on a fiberglass it, it might be different. Yeah. So you might just want to ask your dealer about that and see if they have something that they recommend. You could ask Vinny at uh, Vinny's Airstream. Vinny's repair. North Bay like, Airstream. Vinny will tell repair. you even if you don't have an Airstream. I bet he would say. Yeah, you know, he'll probably know. He'll point you in the right direction. Um, let's see. Somebody asked if we ever stay at Harvest Host. We have not, but we have some really good friends, um, Deese and Jennifer Neely. They have a blog called Neely's on Wheels, and they spend a lot of time at Harvest Host destinations. So, you know, maybe this next year we'll give it a try and see how it goes, but they've had really great success. Let's see. Sorry, I'm trying to scroll through and look at some of these comments. We're passing the Dometic booth. This is, uh, Dometic's the ones, uh, that's our, who do our, really pretty much all the appliances in our Airstream are, are from Dometic. Yeah, so you can sort of see, we'll um, scroll around. So they had They're a kind of, display. I was yeah. This, there was a, they had a chef here today. So this is the kind of thing you see, like these trade shows, it's cool. And um, so they're cooking on this Dometic cooktop, uh, they had like some really good buffalo chicken dip and stuff like that. Yeah. It's just kind of a, it's fun. So this um, area here, the, the trade show technically is over for the day. I think it ended like 30 minutes ago. So they're probably trying to kick us out right now. But you can sort of see, you know, their display. You can see all the new like Dometic range and stovetop options Some here. Some of these coolers here real fast. I just these like coolers them. are really awesome. Yep. No, pictures. no pictures? We know them. <laughs> <laughs> just like, uh, all right. She's doing a good job. They're about to call security on Yeah, us. so these are the new Dometic portable fridge and freezers. These are super cool. They um, plug into like a 12 volt outlet and so you can carry it in your vehicle with you. So it's like having a fridge or freezer inside your vehicle while you're rolling down the road. So it's super cool because if you've ever been on a long camping trip, you know that your fridge doesn't hold half of what you really need. Um, but these are a great option. So yeah. this one right here splits in half. 
So you can actually have one side be a freezer and one side be a cooler or refrigerator. It's sort of like having a refrigerator freezer that you can just take around with you wherever you want to go. Like we would like to have one, like even the bed of Seymour. Yeah. You know, it'd be cool. You could wire it up off the 12 volt probably. It's really neat. So put it under a tonneau cover or something. Yeah. Or people put them in the back seat, you know. Yeah. And it has like a temperature setting so you can actually like put on there like, ooh, sorry, our little gimbal's yeah, it's, freaking it's, out. It's hard to... But so you get low angle shots with this gimbal. You can set your temperature like directly on here, like what you want the temperature to be. And um, so it's pretty cool. Now wait, now guys, I really want you to take a look at this new appliance. It, it's fantastic, <laughs> sleek, contemporary styling. They do have a cool, cool toilet. This is the kind it's of thing. It's like a uh, residential toilet. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's kind of, that's, that's something Resi you don't see very often <laughs> in the RV world. You know, usually you're stepping on a pedal or you're Yeah, that's true. Out. Yeah, like this is the kind of thing you can see at the, the RV trade show that, you know, where else are you going to look at the latest toilet design? Yeah. So, but good times. Those portable uh, fridge freezers are really cool and they're really just starting to push these in the North American market. I think they're really big in Europe. But, um, you know, even if you're not on the road in an RV, if you're just at home, I think it'd be cool to have one of these because, you know, how many times have you been out running errands and you've got to go to like Costco or you got to go to a grocery store and then you've got other stops to make and you're worried about, you know, the chicken that you bought or whatever. And if you have one of these bad boys, you know, you just put your, your cold stuff in there and it's like a portable fridge. So. Well, look, this toilet here is the king. It is the king. This is the king because it gets its own unique stand. Like all these other toilets, you know, they're sort of gathered together over there in a bunch. But it's like, motion technology. Yeah, this it's is touchless. You just wave your hand over it, I think, and it flushes. Man, what I wouldn't give. Touchless toilet operation. <laughs> so, Fancy. the Royal the Flush, Royal Mike Flush. and Leslie, that's, that's they right. Called it. That is the Royal Flush model. All right, I think security's about to handcuff us and, and throw yeah. us out. Yeah, he was thinking about it. Yeah, he was thinking. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> the things we do for you guys. Yeah. So Christy's explaining. Yeah, they're, they're calling the paddy wagon right now. <laughs> Red Test says, I love your mature creativity and skill with the English language. I, can, I just can't tell if that's sarcasm or not, but I appreciate it. <laughs> You know, my mother is a retired English teacher, so uh, she has always uh, policed my grammar, shall we say. Yeah. But, you know, if you ever shoot a video, it's really tough to say two sentences consecutively without screwing something up. So, yeah. and all of my critics can attest to that. So wow, we've just, that yeah, we've just stepped outside the the big convention center. I want to show you behind me this beautiful sunset. Holy cow! Like, did, did we just dial this up or what? But uh, we're here at this Kentucky Exposition Center. So it's like, it's in Louisville, Kentucky, and it's obviously where they have a lot of conventions and so forth, but there's also an amusement park. Next door, Yeah. called Kentucky Kingdom. It's closed for the season right now, but that's it over there. Yeah, but I mean, it's really, uh, so we're actually sort of camping stream on a big patch of asphalt and mud right next to that uh, amusement park. But yeah, this this sunset is pretty stunning, you know. So, <laughs> all right. So, I well, don't know. guys, we are closing we in on the uh, 50 minute mark, so I think we are going to sign off. We just wanted to say hi from the from the convention here. Yeah, we and let be, you know what we're up to. We're shooting a lot of video. Obviously, we're going to have other video stuff coming out of this. And we will probably do another live video tomorrow, I think. I mean, don't hold me to that, but uh, yeah, we'll it's, try. it's a lot of fun. We really love uh, being able to interact with you guys live. It's and a lot of fun just to get feedback from you guys and have questions and hear where you're tuning in from, and we enjoy it. So yeah. hopefully you like it. If you like it, give this video a thumbs up. No, I almost <laughs> never watch them back after we record them because I cringe at it's hearing... It's a little cringeworthy. I cringe at hearing myself and seeing myself talk on these things, but I appreciate <laughs> that you guys would tune in and and listen to us and interact with us. So, yeah. a lot of fun. Uh, thank you, as always, and stick around because we'll have some more stuff coming soon. And check us out on in Instagram. 
because we're going to be posting little video clips throughout our travels and you know uh so it's instagram long long honeymoon yeah uh, we're going to try and boost our subscriber count over there because yeah, right, right now i think we have five to, people we're trying to boost our subscriber count on youtube too we are closing in on that hundred thousand subscriber mark that's a really big deal so if you haven't subscribed yet please do it makes all the difference in the world <laughs> Um, as far as things that we can get access to or things we can bring you guys and we would just appreciate it. So it's free. All you got to do is click that little subscribe button down there. And if you want to get a notification of whenever we post a new video on our channel, click the bell next to subscribe and that will send you an email alert um, on your phone when you... Yeah. A new video from Long Long Honeymoon. In fact, I think if you've clicked that bell, you probably got a notification about this live chat. Like yeah. if we're going live, you would get a little notification. And so, you know, if you like the live chats, that's a good reason to, to click it. Yeah. So, speaking of clicking, I'm going to click end if I can. Yeah. I don't know exactly how to do this, so this may be not the smoothest ending we've ever had. And... The end. The end. Maybe we just close it up there? I don't know. All right. Thanks for watching, guys. Are you sure you want to stop streaming?